Uh, thank you very much indeed. Uh, it's scary back there. It's very dark. Uh, so welcome, uh, everybody. Thank you for being here. Welcome to the beginning of my talk. This is the beginning of the talk. Uh, what I'm going to do, call me old-fashioned, call me traditionalist. I'm going to start at the beginning. Then what I'm going to do is work through the middle of my talk, I think. And then what I'm going to do is uh, go to the end of my talk. And the beginning of the talk is really, really important. Anybody who knows anything about public speaking tells you that in the first few minutes of any talk, what you're supposed to do is grab the attention of the audience. And what you're supposed to do with that attention is tell them exactly what your talk is about. In that first few minutes, they need to have the answer to the question, what is this guy on about? So I've got to answer that question for you. I've also got to answer the other question the audiences have in their heads, which is great, I can understand what this guy is talking about, but what's in it for me? Why should I give up some of my time and sit in an audience and listen to this guy talking? And, you know, I thought a long time about this talk because I am really passionate about this subject and I'm really passionate about this book. You know, I've written ten other books apart from this one and this one, as far as I'm concerned, ladies and gentlemen, this is the book I was born to write. I am really, really, really excited about having produced this book. And so the talk that accompanies the book, you know, I'm really, really passionate about. There's a bit of anxiety as well. And I was thinking, well, how can I really, right in the first few minutes, tell people exactly what this talk is about and really why they need to listen to it? And I was really worried about getting that right. I tried all different sorts of openings. And then I realized it's all actually written on the front cover of my book. Because what this, book, what this talk is about, what this book is about, is about how to be happy and successful. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, I have invited to this talk some of the happiest and most successful people I know. So maybe you won't get anything out of this talk, but you may know some people who are less happy and less successful than you are. <laughs> and I'm also going to answer the question, how do you do this? How can people who are already quite happy and quite successful, how do they get to the next level of happiness and success? And I think the way that they do that is by transforming, utterly transforming, the relationship they have with their work. And for me, again, that is summed up in the title of this book, the transition they need to go through, the journey they need to take, is from the world I call the making a living world and to take, transform themselves into the creating a life world. So that's what this talk is about, and that's how I think it's possible. And on the uh, flip charts behind me here, because a management consultant like me can't go very far without flip chart papers. I get all sort of nervous without them. So I brought three flip chart papers. This is the structure of my talk. I'm going to be looking at those separate worlds, the making a living world and the creating a life uh, world from these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight perspectives. I'll be taking each in turn, spending about an hour with each of those topics. We should be out of here by about 2.33 o'clock. Just checking to see if you're listening. And then what we're going to do is look at it. This is the making a living world and this one over here is the creating a life well we're going to fill those things out and if during the talk you have any questions of me or any challenges of me then please stop me and we will deal with them yeah but where was it i hear you ask where was it i got this idea that there was a distinction between making a living and creating a life i'll tell you i was on a course many years ago i think 1999 I was with a, on a course with an organization called Landmark. Landmark Education. I don't know if you've heard of them. Landmark Education do these extraordinary three-day courses called The Forum. I did mine in London when I lived in London, 1999. So there I was sitting in this giant room in London with 250 or 300 people around me sitting like this, yeah? And on stage, there is a single facilitator dealing with 250, 300 people. And the way the forum works is that the facilitator will read a bit from the sort of landmark Bible or book or whatever it is. And he will do a bit of teaching. He'll do a bit of uh, sort of uh, advice to people and, th and thought-provoking, this, that, the other. And then we sit and we listen to that and we think about it and, and gradually begin to realize that this material is going along inside you. Yeah, it's quite extraordinary. And dotted around the room are various microphones. Because the idea is that if anything that this guy says stimulates you or provokes a thought or shifts anything inside you, the idea is that you come up and share. You, know, you get behind the microphone and you say, well, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Facilitator. What I feel about that is this, and what I feel about that is the other. And it's quite extraordinarily powerful and moving. And this lady came on stage, and she came onto, onto the stage, there was a microphone here, and she began to talk about this relationship with her father. She started off, actually, very, very 
uh, speaking very badly about her father, she said, actually, my father's a jerk. And the facilitator began to work with that, yeah, and began to transform that relationship. And it was quite an extraordinary 15 or 20 minutes of coaching that the facilitator gave. And what was happening was that this, she was already quite emotional as she started talking about her father, but as this guy began to work on her, she began to realize that things were really shifting inside her. And she was beginning to cry, and we were sitting in the audience, and we were beginning to cry too. And she was going, oh my God, you have changed, she was talking to the facilitator now, she said, you've changed my life. And he said, ah non, because he was French. <laughs> he was French, and he spoke in a really awful French accent. Ah, no, he said, I have uh, saved uh, your life. And she said, yeah, 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 that's what you've done. You've saved my life. Oh, my God, I, I, I can't wait to see you. And actually what she did, she ran off stage and she rang her father up and told her to love her and everything. And we're going, he's like, my God, he saved her life. I want some of that. I can imagine how I, I can't wait to get up for the microphone. It was quite extraordinary. And she's going, oh, my God, thank you so much. And everybody's really, really amazed. And off she goes to ring her father. Long story short, 10 minutes later, she's back on stage. And she says, I'm here to talk about another man in my life. And he goes, uh-huh. And who is, because he's French, who is uh, this uh, man? And she said, it's my boss. He's a jerk. And I'm going, uh, uh, but, but, uh, transformation, you went through the, and everything, <laughs> everything was shifted, and, and I'm looking around, and everybody's going, yeah, yeah, boss, jerk. And it seems, one of my experiences in the organizational development consultancy I do, is that for many people, the world of making a living, the world of being at work, the world of being in employment, seems to be untouched by anything extraordinary that happens to them outside that work. It seems there are different rules. It seems there are different assumptions being made. If you have a friend, and the friend is going through relationship difficulties, nowadays, it didn't happen when sort of my mum and dad, I think, were younger, but nowadays, if your friend was going through relationship difficulties, you would say, go to marriage guidance counselling, go to some sort of counsellor, or therapist, or coach. Yeah? If your friend was a religious person, was having a crisis of faith, you would say, well, go to the priest or go to somebody who can help you with your religious faith. You know, and I think what tends to happen with the world of work is that if somebody says to you, God, I hate my work, you say, yeah, well, you should see my boss. He's a real jerk. You know? So these different rules apply. And I've got very curious about that because I think if you get yourself into uh, the way of thinking which says that the world of work is different from outside of life, and if things are possible outside of life which are not possible inside the workplace, then we are doing ourselves a disservice. We cannot live a whole and complete, a happy and successful life. And I think there are a number of forces in place, a number of things that sort of keep us from making that distinction and joining them together to realize that in fact all we can always do as human beings is to create a life. The first of these is definitions.